Well, how do there, chumps? It's I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chumps, I'm going to be reviewing the Aquarius Update and Aquarius Expedition. Yeah, they've both got the same namesake, so why the fudge not? So, mainly this was a sort of expedition which had a couple of extra bits that trip over inside of the you know, game as an update. You know, inside a game, we can still do our fishing. So, it is predominantly a fishing sort of update, and I feel that the expedition done a very good job of communicating exactly how you go about doing your fishing. So there's a couple of baits that you can use that are actually done as baits, but you can put pretty much anything on your fishing hook inside of this update, which is pretty darn cool to see. I mean, look, I could put some nip nip on if I wanted to. There we go. And I can cast out with a nip nip. Happy chow. Into the water you go, nip nip. Hopefully I'm going to catch myself an interesting looking little fishy. Very good. And all i got to do is wait for the line to go green. You've got these holograms of these fish that are swimming around. And all these holograms do is denote the size of the fish that you're going to be pulling aboard. I mean, sometimes you might see a fish hologram and catch a crab. Or you might catch an octopus. Well, clearly that hologram is not an octopus or a crab. It is just a denotion of size. When you've actually pulled it aboard... The only thing you get to see on size is it says medium sized. You don't actually get to see a fish model. You don't hold the fish up. You don't really get a king chip with what you've actually caught. They're almost like you're pulling aboard playing cards in a roundabout way. And I'm hoping that Hello Games adds in models for all these. I mean, a lot of these, we've got fish that look very similar to them. I don't think it would take much for Hello Games to add in proper models, and it'd be nice to actually hold it up and see how big it is compared to you, know, you as a person. Because at the moment, it does feel a little bit lacklustre when you catch a fish. Yeah, you might see it's a blue one, which is uncommon, or it might be a, a yellow one, um, if it's super uncommon, or purple for slightly rarer, you know? But other than that, you don't really... It's not... I don't get super excited when I'm catching a fish, even when I do catch one of the super rare type fish. Now, this one gives me a higher chance of catching something a little bit rarer. You can see, well, actually, you can't see because I'm in the way. But if I jump on over here, now you can see that I'm going to get a 64% rarity improvement to my catch. So let's give that a go. Let's see if I catch a slightly rarer fish. All right, people in the view of us. I get there we go. And here comes the holograms of the fish again. Lovely. Come on. Oh, we got a nibble. Go on. You know you want it. It's a tiny fish, this one. Whenever I'm pulling in, it's going to be small. But you see, it's a fish. Yeah, we still caught a fish. It's a small one. It's common again. It's green. But that's kind of how fishing it works inside of No Man's Sky. And not only that, if you really want to, you can go into difficulty. You can go down... And you've got a new fishing one here. So it's currently on standard. You can make it more challenging. It just takes longer for them to actually bite. But there's, there's no sort of um, struggle with the fish to bring it aboard. And it's no snapping of the line still, even on challenging. But you can put it on auto catch. And auto catch does what it says on the tin. So if I just cast into the water there, I can just leave the joy pad alone. Look, I won't even touch it. So I suppose this functionality is in there for those that may just want to sit back, relax, drink a cup of tea and not worry. Or maybe for those that you know, have got issues with controls or arthritis and they don't want to do this over and over and over again. I mean, there's not a lot of skill involved anyway, so why not just turn it off and just sit here and have a more relaxing jaunt? There you go, look, he's pulling it aboard and I'm not touching nothing. And look at that, I caught an uncommon then. OK, so what do you do with these fish once you've actually caught them? Well, you can sell them. I mean, you can see how much they're worth by just hovering over them. That one's worth 10,000 units. You know, not too bad. 60,000 units. 60,000 units. 20,000 units. Not bad, right? But um, if I scan a creature, if there's any creatures that I can scan... I've already scanned the creatures on this planet. I don't know whether I can look on the discoveries and show just how many units I got for scanning them. No, sadly I can't. But I probably got that for scanning a creature. Let me just jump in the water and let's just scan a fish or something. Because I don't think I've scanned any underwater fish creatures. Here you go. Look, if I scan one of these, how many units am I going to get? I just got 50,000 just for doing a simple scan and that took seconds. 
So I wouldn't say it's profitable being a fisherman. Not really, not overly. Now you can cook these fish. You can um, turn them into whatever. So there you go. I can turn that into marine steak. Let's see how much money I'm going to get from marine steak. 35,000. So it's not, it's not massive amounts. Now you can actually release the fish and you can get nanites and releasing the fish. It's, it's not too bad to release the fish, but here we go. I'll stick that in there. Make edible chum. Nice. Now, if you have got three fish that you've turned into fishing sort of stuff, so you have to a crab in there as well, the peeled claws, there are some higher tier recipes that you can make. So if I get the peeled claws, that's worth 33,000, put that over there, go back into here and get something else that I've already processed, the marine steak, stick that in there. I'm going to get seafood stew. Now, the seafood stew isn't worth much more than these two combined. I mean, they're worth like, what, 70,000 and 30,000. That isn't worth like those two combined anyway. So it doesn't seem that I should be making it into that. There you go, put that in there as well. And you can go to Sea's Bounty, which is the highest tier thing, really, in what I've managed to find so far. And that's only 71,000. But that marine steak, uh, when I had two of them, was worth 70,000 on its own. It doesn't feel like it's balanced right when it comes to what's worth what. Um, I mean, you can go into the water and you can release fish. So if I jump into the water here, go into here, and I can release these fish. There you go. I've got some nanites up there. I've just got 109 nanites for releasing that fish. Fine. Well, let's release, um, I don't know, another one of these purple ones. Oh, okay. I think I've got 210 for that one. Now, you can sell these to Kronos as well for nanites up in the actual um, anomaly. You are going to get nanites, but it's very similar in nanite yield as what I just got for releasing the fish. You've got these little pods that you can use. You can put down these and uh, they do automatically catch fish. I emptied that one not so long ago. We've got this one here. Here we go. We've got a full repertoire of fish in this one. But really, to get the nanites from Kronos, really, you need to process these. He's not a massive fan of them if you haven't cooked them. He's not into his old sushi. He gives you exactly the same as releasing them. So you may as well release them because releasing them is far quicker. Now, the thing with these fish is they take up a heck of a lot of storage. Thankfully, we got given a skiff. Now, the skiff inside of the expedition, I could store loads of fish inside of the cold storage. Outside of the expedition, not so much. Here you go, I'll put my skiff a bit closer to shore. I'll head on over and I'll show you what I mean. So if I hit up these storage boxes on the skiff, which are pretty weird to hit, and you keep, yeah, I've done that a few times, you only get 10 slots. 10 slots on your skiff to store away your fish. Whereas inside the expedition, I'm sure we had like about four rows or something. I think we had like 60 slots or something mental. I think the skiff needs to have the whole box open. I don't know why they've limited us to just 10 slots. It feels really redundant because the amount of different fish types that you catch, it's just, it gets full too quick. You know, I, I haven't got any doubles of these to store over there. Oh, there you go. There's one double. That's the only one that I had. But because because there's like 200 odd fish types now, it's not it's not great. It, it really isn't. Mm. Now, the thing that I like doing now that fishing is in game is building like little mini bases like this near to the shoreline, casting off, just chilling and relaxing. And I'll tell you what, doing it inside of VR is another level inside of vr I've, I've scored this a nine out of ten just because i think fishing does so much to the game now the actual expedition itself gave us quite a fair few good rewards like this suit that i'm wearing but you see the gloves the gloves are part of a different set it's the only piece that they didn't give us everything else they did but um it'd be nice to have a full set of armor when they introduce a new armor piece because it looks so cool but then you look at the gloves and like hold on they look out of place but yeah even still pretty darn freaking lovely like it like it a lot i still like this armor set it's very cool what else did i get given inside this expedition i got a new little bobblehead toy for my ship so let's go show you that quickly 
It's on the old dash there. I've got my own little octopus. It's lovely. His little tentacles move about when I jutter the ship from side to side. It's wonderful. So we got that. And we got some decals for our base. And I have put the decals on the wall inside of my base. Let's just head on in and I'll show you where I put them. I put them just inside the doorway, actually. So I've got like a little fishy menu there. Of all the different sorts of fish. And then I've got these two over here. So we've got given those decals. But as far as decals go, they're actually really quite nice. I quite like those decals. Yeah, very cool. So the actual expedition rewards were quite good, I feel, anyway. And we also got given a rod as well. So in the multi-tool, I've got it. Oh, I haven't got it installed, actually. Can I install it? It's this one here. I haven't got the parts. So you know what? I'll just stick it into creative mode quickly and install that. Boom. Since I went and deleted my rod to place it out, I might as well have the better looking one. There we go. We've got the better rod now. Very nice. Cool. So that's pretty much everything that the actual expedition delivered in when it comes to rewards. Did I enjoy the expedition? The expedition, every single badge inside of this expedition was pretty much a new badge, a new milestone to be done. And it was all fishing related. Yes, there was a couple, you know, fixing, finding your ship, taking off, jumping systems, going to rendezvous points, all the same as other expeditions. And also scanning the large fish, which was just one sort of one there. Everything else was all about fishing, catching fishes in the storm, catching fish on a cold planet, on a hot planet. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, and it also had some lore in there. It was like sub lore though. It didn't have anything to do with the Void Mother or anything like that. It was actually quite good. Now there are a couple of weird things with this actual update. One being the skiff. Now the skiff itself, it, it's got it's quite a nice model. Inside of VR it does create a couple of um, uh, blind spots with this uh, canopy and stuff like the armatures for it and things but it's it's not too bad it's okay now I, I don't like the storage outside of the expedition they've nerfed it massively i do like the fact that you can recolor your skiff you know, i've got mine red which matches my low logo colors well, there you go i put it white or whatever you can move the skiff even though it was not obvious so if you go on over here the first person I saw doing this on um, YouTube was Beeble Bum. He put it out over there, and the skiff itself will now just gingerly move. You can sort of see it's moving there. You can see the sort of like shoreline. Look, we're heading towards the deeper water there, and it's slowly turning and it's moving out. Now, what I would say with the skiff inside of the actual write-up, inside of the patch notes, it says that the skiff itself can weather any storm. The only thing I find that it protects you from is getting hit by lightning, getting hit by meteors and getting picked up and thrown around by tornadoes. That's what it protects you from. You still get hurt by the weather. Your bar doesn't go down as fast, but it still goes down. But there's another annoyance. As the waves get more choppy, the skiff goes all over the place. It goes proper skiffy, does the skiff. In fact, it's tilted and it's thrown me off a number of times to the point where I've just called my ship in and I sit on my ship and, and fish because we've got landing gear on the fish on the uh, landing craft. I just pull my ship in, and I find that I'm sh I'm fishing off the side of my ship more than the skiff. I think what the skiff needs is another little control over here to set the altitude. So when it is really choppy, if you want, you can raise the skiff so you're not affected as much by the waves. It'd still be nice to get a bit of a bob, but not to the point that it tilts almost vertical and you slide off. So yeah, I find myself just purchasing on, on the wing next to my little droid here. I quite like having the little droid there while I'm doing my fishing, you know? So, yeah. And look, sometimes I get this happen where you're actually fishing out of your multi-tool. It only happens very rarely, but I've had that happen like once or twice now. So a bit of an oddity. I, I think it's when you first install the actual technology. It's the first time you get it look like this, which is quite fun. It's quite interesting, doesn't it? But yeah, the expedition itself, because they actually went out of their way to make the expedition more of a tutorial for how to fish, I've had less questions about how to fish then if this was if this wasn't done this way i'd probably get loads of questions on how to fish but i think the expedition has done a bloody good job of teaching people how to fish and what fishing is all about 
And I think that the expedition def deserves quite a little bit of a, a nudge up when it comes to giving it a review score. But at the same time, the expedition itself, I've played it through twice. And although that I enjoyed it, I wouldn't say it was fun. After you've caught like your first stormfish or you, you I, I, I don't really want to run that expedition again for a while. Put it that way. I mean, I've done it twice. It was okay both times. But if, if someone said, do you want to do it a third time? Maybe, no, you're all right. Thank you very much. No, okay. I'll leave it there. Um, it wasn't fun, but I enjoyed it. It's, it. If you know what I mean. I enjoyed it because it was relaxing. If you don't want to do a speed run, it's going to be fine. Because you can't really speed run it. You've got to catch over like a hundred fish, bank a hundred fish. That takes time. You've got to catch a lot of fish that are RNG. There's a lot of random numbers. You're not going to catch fish through skill. You know, I play a lot of real fish in VR on my VR headset. You know what? I'm going to show you some footage from real VR fishing and show you what I've been enjoying and why I can't really score this too high in comparison. Okay, so here we go. I've got, I've got a bit of footage for you. Okay, John. So I play real fishing VR quite a fair bit. You can see my trophy cabinet over there. So you get trophies for catching fish. But not only that, I have this beautiful large aquarium where every single fish that I have caught that I like, I can display inside of an aquarium. Now, this is just my freshwater aquarium. I also have a saltwater aquarium aquarium and you can display your fish so each of the fish has fish models and i can just sit here and watch this you know it's, it's beautiful and i can say well i haven't got enough goldfish in there i need some more goldfish and i can go and catch some more goldfish and chuck them in my tank if i'm lucky enough to catch a goldfish but yeah beautiful and i wish we could do this inside of no man's sky yeah now something that i really like about real fish in vr is it's, it's got a sense of belonging. I mean, so has No Man's Sky, which they kind of share in common. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's got the same feel to it anyway. I mean, in real v VR, you actually have to turn the crank. You know, you have to actually reel in your fish, which is a little bit different to No Man's Sky. The line still changes colour when you get a bite and so forth and so on. There's a little bit more to this where you've got to sort of tempt the fish with the bait and you're not too sure what bait for what fish to use unless you do your research first. Whereas No Man's Sky is a little bit more like a random numbers game, you know? Not every cast am I going to get a fish. Inside of this, you sort of have to do a little bit of study first. So you need to look at what fish are in this sort of region and what sort of baits and what sort of depths they're found at. You know, it's it's pretty cool. Okay, chums, so real fish in VR actually has the same sort of holographic fish as in No Man's Sky. Now these holographic fish, even if I did say catch that little one, that little yellow one just there, it's got every chance of like a banquet and it could be an octopus or a squid or something. But I'm gonna try and catch maybe that big green one or that big yellow one over there and we'll see what we get so here we go i'm going to cast out for one of those two Oops. there we go and i'm going to reel it in slowly and see if we can drop it down in front of say that yellow one there let's see if we can get that one because that's one of the biggest fish holograms inside of the game the only thing is there is another medium-sized fish that's in the same sort of... Oh, we've got the, this green one going for it. See him? Now, he's quite... Oh, we've got, we've got a battle going on. I'm not too sure which one I've hooked there. But this is where it goes. Man against beast. And it looks like I've stunned the fish so I can reel him in nice and quickly here. Oh, he's off. I've got to pull it over to the side. So there is a little bit more skill involved in this than there is in that of No Man's Sky. Am I going to bank myself a monster? We shall see. And there we go. We have got a white spotted char. I've already got six of these, but it's quite nice to see the size of the fish in actuality and its coloration and everything else. Pretty darn lovely, isn't it? But yeah, that one is probably what I'm going to release. Boom. 
there's a lot more skill involved, you know? And the bigger the fish, the bigger the battle, and the more fun you're going to have with it. The smaller the fish, the more relaxing and the less effort you're going to have with it. It's quite cool. Hello chums, from that footage that I just shown you, you can see that Hello Games could have gone to town a little bit more with some of the mechanics inside of this. You know, they could have done a little bit more inside of the actual game to provide that more immersion. Just seeing the fish models and the actual comparison against your player size would be one thing, but if they could introduce some kind of way of showcasing your fish in an aquarium, that would have taken it up another level. I mean, with this update, I must admit, something that I am going to be doing now is every time I go to a planet that has water, I'm probably going to be landing there and casting out, thinking, do I want to put myself a nice little lodge by this little bank? Do I want to fish here again? Has it got lovely vistas? It's going to have me looking for a decent fishing spot on decent planets with water. It's going to have me doing that. I just don't know how long it's going to have me doing that. You know, after I have managed to complete the fishing catalogue, which is something that is quite expansive now, so if I go into the old wonders and I go to fishing records, look at them all. We've got pages and pages of fish, and it's going to take me some time to fill that. I haven't even done a full page, you know? So, yeah, it's going to take me a while to get all these unlocked, if I want to unlock them, but without having a place to showcase them and show off your catches to people, it feels a little bit shallow right now. Well, a bit of a pun there, but shallow. Another thing is you find these inside of your wonders. So you actually hit up wonders and you go inside of the fishing records. Yet there's no option on this to add these to your wonders projector because a lot of them don't have models. I mean, we do have a turtle model in game. We do have a clam in game. We don't yet have a giant ray in game. However, that bomber boy over on the Twitterverse did actually find that they're working on giant rays inside of the game files. So I'm wondering whether Hello Games is going to add in models for all of these. Now, the octopus, quite curiously, at the start of the Light No Fire trailer, there's a giant octopus in the water there. They could lift and shift it over. I think Hello Games could quite easily put together ship um, models for every single one of these types of fish, because half of them, like you know that one, that one, that one, even the eel, that one, that we've already got models for all of these inside of game. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that they flesh this out. I'm hoping that we get larger aquariums to showcase these fish in. And if that's the case, then I would have scored this a lot higher. I would have been scoring this a nine. You know, if we had an aquarium to put these in, or Wonders projectors to project these in, I would have been scoring this a 9, because it would add so much more to your base builds, especially if you could put that aquarium inside your freighter, as well as down on a base. Yeah, I would have scored this a, a 9.2 or 9.5, because it, it would have been freaking awesome. But the way that they've put it in, it feels very surface level. These just feel like playing cards. You, know, you, you can't see them. You can only look largest catch 23 kilograms. I don't know what 23 kilograms is. You know, whenever I've caught fish on my weighing scales, it's been in pounds. I once caught a 16 pound carp and I was like, oh my God, that's freaking huge. And it is, it's a, it's about, you know, it's a good sized carp. But I don't know what 23 kilograms is. And for a shark, that sounds small. I don't know. I mean, oh, OK, turtles, five kilograms. I don't know how many kilograms there are to a pound. Yes, I could go school myself. I could learn. But it would be nice to be able to see these in aquariums so you know how big they are. Or when you catch them, to hold them up so you can actually see how big they are and take a photo of yourself with your catch, stick it on Twitter and say, look what I caught, Sean. Yeah, there's none of that. There's none of that. So for that reason... Well, not just that reason, but also the skiff being quite skiffy. The fact that you can't put a lot inside the storage outside of the expedition, but in the expedition you could. The expedition, I'm going to score a 7.5 out of 10. I think it done a fantastic job of working as a tutorial on how to do fishing. And I really like the fact that every single milestone was fishing aligned. The only reason that I'm, I'm marking it down is because I wouldn't say it was the most fun expedition to do. It was enjoyable the first two times, but then after that, I would say because of how random it is and how much time you can spend just trying to dredge up a freaking bottle with a message in it. I mean, I had one that took me over an hour and I had another one that took me 10 seconds. It was just completely random. 
and, and there's no skill there. So there could be times where you run the expedition and you're just as unlucky as unlucky can get and you could end up spending a day trying to catch free stormfish. You know, I've had people in my messages saying, I've been trying for three days now to complete this one milestone. And then for the life of me, I'm just not getting it. And it's not down to their skill. It's down to random numbers. So I would say that's the reason why I've marked it down so heavily is because it was a little bit too RNG, this one. This one was a little bit too RNG. And I think some of the numbers were a little bit high for what was expected of people. Um, I know that this expedition is running for a good number of weeks and perhaps, you know, it's there for that reason, for people to just sit back, relax and enjoy. But not everybody's got that sort of amount of time to pile into something like an expedition. But if we go quick to mode select, let's just see how much time is running on the expedition itself. So the expedition has got six weeks, six weeks remaining people inside the view of us. Yeah, so it's quite a long one. So you have got bags and bags and oodles and oodles and strudels of time to do this expedition. Takes us up to mid to late October. But you know, as much as I enjoyed it the first couple of times, I can't say that I would enjoy it a third. So that's why I've given it a 7.5 out of 10 for the actual expedition. The actual content of fishing, because the content is so surface level, you know, it's basically a card game rather than an actual models and, oh, I'm glad I've kept that, I can showcase it, I can show it off type game, is why that I, I'm going to score this, the actual content update for fishing, a little bit lower. I'm going to score it about a 7 out of 10. Because although that I think that it's going to make me rethink about where I place my bases and when I visit water planets, I'm going to look for a nice little vista, a nice little nook. Because we don't have things like proper waterfalls or rivers, it is just going to be lakes, ponds and the ocean. And yeah, you can, you could, when you build a base, you could maybe make it, you could use your train manipulator to make a little river. You might even be able to make yourself a waterfall if you're quite clever, but it, it's all going to feel very samey after a while, you know, because everything is quite similar when it comes to ponds, lakes and oceans. It's like the bases that you make at oceans are going to be on tiny little islands out in the middle of nowhere. Or if they give us the ability to fish outside of the moon pool without glitching it through the ceiling, maybe I might make a few underwater ocean fishy holes. But I don't know. I, I don't think it's going to keep me busy long is what I'm thinking people because currently you can't show off your catches you can't even take photos and put bragging rights on Twitter it it feels very lackluster it feels a little bit shallow it feels like they've shoehorned fishing in just to get it in I'm wondering whether this is more a test bed for light no fire and we're actually just testing the fishing mechanic for when they put it into light no fire I can't help but feel that this is a secondary to another game at this stage when it comes to the way that this has been implemented maybe that's a little unfair but at the same time i feel that the fishing in this is very similar to the fishing that you get in something like minecraft rather than inside of say red dead redemption red dead redemption the fishing is more like real fishing vr the footage that i showed earlier I freaking love the i uh, love the fishing in uh, red dead redemption it's one of the best things for me to do Apart from I spent all day catching fish, go to sell them in town and get shot by somebody and have all my fish stolen. Yeah, that happened numerous times. <laughs> anyway, I digress. But I feel that Hello Games have put something in with a lot of potential. If they added in fish models and an aquarium or even the ability to display the odd fish in a display case stuffed and taxidermied in your base, you know, that could be quite cool too. Or use the wonder projector. We could make it look like we've taxidermied one to the wall using a wonders projector. But right now, considering that they sit inside of the wonders catalogue, yet they're not actually true wonders that you can actually pin or do anything with, is a little bit of an extra kick in the shins with that one. You know, it's like, well, hold on. They're in the wonders catalogue. Why can't I put them in my wonders projector? I want to put them in my wonders projector. Yeah, no, to be honest, I want to see them swimming around in an aquarium like in real fishing. But yeah, I'm going to give it a 7. A 7 out of 10. A 7 out of 10 for this update because I feel that it's just the surface level of what's been delivered in. It could have been so much more. Inside of VR, I did score this a 9 because of just how relaxing it is. And it's more about how it makes me feel. And that is very personal to me. 
if you played this in VR, would you have scored this a nine? Would you score this higher inside of VR than in non-VR? I mean, inside of VR, because it's it's not just a gimmick. It it, it it's actual. You know, you actually do actions and things inside of this. You can just limit it to one button press. But inside of VR, it feels like you know you're actually doing some work there. Although you can change the settings in VR to auto catch as well, which takes from that immersion experience. But at the same time, I, I suppose they've got to put that sort of stuff in for everybody, to be inclusive of everybody that might have, you know, RSI type things. But anyway, people, that's my scores all round. So seven for the content that's been delivered into the game, 7.5 for the expedition, and my VR review, if you want to watch it, I'll put a link up there, but I actually score it a nine out of 10 for VR, because in VR, I just found it so relaxing and so chilled that I'm going to use it as a de-stressor. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. But until next time, people, that's my scores. If you agree or disagree, sound up in the comments. Let me know how you would have scored this. I did a poll over on my, um, my community tab. Let me show you that quickly. Hold on a second, I'll show you that. Okay, so I've got it up on screen. I might as well move myself over to the side so you can read this a little bit better. So it says, my review of No Man's Sky Aquarius video is coming soon. I think they will have fishing, better survival mechanics in light, no fire. But if I scroll on down, the bit that I'm interested in showing you guys is the actual poll itself. So those that scored it between a 9 and 10, only 7% of people went as far as to say that you know, it's worth that. Whereas the next, next section down, in between a 7 to a 9 out of 10, 47% of people. And that's where I've placed it a 7 to a 7.5 out of 10. Now, a lot of people will probably say, oh, it's worth an 8. It probably is worth an 8. Maybe I'm being a little bit harsh. Between a 5 and 7 out of 10, though, 21% of people said that. So I think more people have been leaning on below than above. So maybe 8 is a little bit too generous. So maybe a 7 or a 7.5 is where the general consensus is. Uh, below a 5 out of 10, 10% of people said that. So more people disliked it than super liked it. That's how I'm reading this. I mean, I had quite a large amount of people vote, 380 votes on this. So it's not too bad. And then people that wanted to see poll results, 14% of people. And we've got a plethora of... Um, of comments on here ranging from this is freaking awesome i love it this is really good some people saying that they felt a little bit shallow you know it'd be nice if they put a little bit more time into either the mechanics to catching the fish or how you go about showing off your fish that sort of thing as there's, there's a whole load of stuff in here a lot of people saying that they found it was a very laid back expedition after all the combat expeditions that we've had it's nice to have an expedition that's been a little bit more slower paced, brought us back to the relaxing vibe that No Man's Sky brings to us that we all love. And I have to agree. Yeah, very cool. A lot of people do sort of agree with my scoring of a seven in here and they give good reason as to why. And thinking that, yes, the skiff is very sort of skiffy. Yeah, the power yapper here says I give it an eight. It was a lot of fun. You see, I said I, I enjoyed it, but I didn't find it fun. I think if I... To find it fun, I would need a way to display these, show them off, um, or even do little photo ops, put pictures on Twitter. Right now, you don't really do that with, with what you've caught. Another thing that you can't do is give somebody the coordinates to where you caught a really cool fish. So someone, if someone's trying to complete their catalogue, you know that it's going to be biome locked. So just go to a, one of those biomes with the deeper oceans and you're going to get your fish. But you can't really share where you caught the fish or where they're going to get a higher chance of catching that legendary fish. Or at least I don't think it's related to portals or anything like that. We've got Chow Lin here that sort of chimed in to say what the fudge has fishing got to do with No Man's Sky, giving it a 1 out of 10. And maybe there's a few people that feel that way, you know? So... There's, there's very mixed feelings out there inside of the community. Now, a lot of these people are my regulars to my videos. A lot of these people have chimed in with comments often. And I go by their general feel and consensus. I mean, I am a content creator for my own purposes, but I also like interacting with a lot of these people. A lot of these people are also members of mine, backers of mine as well. So their thoughts and feelings I do take on board. And I'm like, yeah, actually, they've got a point. It'd be nice if that was in game. Yes and yes. But 
you know, Hello Games is very similar. You know, they look at the community as a whole. They go through Reddit with a fine tooth comb. They've probably already seen what people's pros and cons are with this update. So I'd like to hope, perhaps, that Hello Games might be taking a quick listen and having a quick look-see at what they can do to improve No Man's Sky fishing. And I think adding in the fish models, adding in aquariums, adding in the ability to put them into your Wonders projector would round this out. If they did all of that, I would have scored it 9 across the board. In fact, in VR, I probably would have given it a freaking 10 out of 10. But there you go, people. Sound up in the comments and let me know what you think. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Steve